done it again, Lord. You've done it again. You are good and you are mighty and you are merciful. And you keep taking care of me when I don't deserve it. Praise you, Jesus. Give me another one, Lord. Guide me to who you want me to help. Raise up more that will call upon your name. Raise up those that love you and seek you and trust you. Raise them up, Lord. Raise them up. Lord, we need a generation of believers who are not ashamed of the gospel. We need an army of believers, Lord, that hate to be lukewarm and will stand on your word above all else. Raise them up, Lord. Raise them up. I pray for unity among those that you. I pray that you open their eyes so that they can see your truth. I pray for your hand of protection and guidance. Raise up a generation, Lord, that will take light into this world. That will not compromise when under pressure. That will not cower, Lord, when others fall away. Raise them up, Lord, that they will proclaim that there is salvation in the name of Jesus Raise up warriors who will fight on their knees, who will worship you with their whole hearts, Lord. Lord, call us to battle that we may proclaim King of kings and Lord of lords. I pray these things with all my heart. Raise them up, Lord, raise them up. Hello brothers and sisters, I hope you guys are doing well. This video will be a little more personalized. I've been having a lot of stuff go through my mind and I want to share some scriptures with you guys that are, that are kind of matching up with what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing. And then the next video I do will probably be kind of just more dreams and visions. A little bit ago I was laying in bed and I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. It's, it's more like an audible, you, just, you hear somebody talking to you but it's in your spirit. It's kind of hard to describe. But it's just like if you hear a normal person talking to you, almost telepathic, if you know what I mean. And I heard the hands of Moses. I'm still, of course, praying over the meaning of this audible. You know, I've had dreams to where I saw my hands and I could pretty much stop asteroids with my hand uh, in visions and dreams. I heard myself parting the sea or the ocean. At one point, I saw myself I could shoot fire from my hands. And that was pretty neat. I could fly, I could shoot fire from my hands. And then just a few weeks ago, I have to remind you guys because I'm going to be talking about it in this video. But I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me audibly the same way, but it was even stronger. I heard, God hath chosen thee. And I said, chose me for what? And I heard, to save the children of Israel. 
And I said, how? And I heard that song start to play in my mind called The God of Angel Armies. And so I was like, okay. So a few seconds or minutes go by and I'm thinking that how part again. And as I'm thinking that, I have a vision. And I'm seeing my hands and I'm being given something and I get told, given to Moses. Now I knew it was me the stuff was being given to, but I didn't see what I was being given. This brings me to a scripture that I'm gonna share with you guys. If you turn to Exodus 34.10, I'm gonna read it for you guys, and I want you guys to, to remember that sometimes when you go from Hebrew to English, there's stuff lost in the translation, and especially, you know, future tenses and stuff like that. So in Exodus 34.10, this is the Lord speaking to Moses, but it's in Hebrew, it's not a present tense, it's a future tense meaning like it hasn't happened yet. And so it's a basically a promise to, to Moses that the Lord has given him, uh, you know, what he'll do in the last days. And this is how I know, you know, through what the Lord has shown me, told me, and through scripture that, that Moses and Elijah are the two witnesses. And, and you guys, Noah's really good at this. If you guys would go and check out Brother Stephen's channel at Israeli News Live, he's a Hebrew scholar and he's really good at this. But in Exodus 34, 10, it says, and I'll remind you guys that this is the Lord speaking to Moses, pretty much saying that he's going to make a covenant with him, that in the last days, he's going to do wonders through him. And the, the tense here is really a future tense uh, in the Hebrew. And he says, and he said, behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing which I will do with thee. Doesn't that sound amazing? And I don't know if you guys caught that covenant part, but do you guys remember what the Lord told me about a covenant? Just to quickly remind you, I kept getting all these dreams and visions about being voted in heaven to lead God's armies. And I didn't understand it because in my mind I'm thinking, well, you know, and it's Michael leads the army, so how can I lead the armies? It just didn't make sense to me. But the Lord actually sent an angel, and I was allowed to talk to the angel, and that's the first question I asked. I asked, how can I lead God's armies if Michael leads? And the angel said to me, yes, Michael leads under the old covenant, but you shall lead under the new. So the new covenant. And as we just read in 34.10, the Lord is telling Moses that, um, let me get, turn back to it here. It says, and he said, behold, and this is the Father, or the Lord talking to Moses. He said, behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. So is this the same covenant that the Lord was talking about whenever he had his angel tell me that, yes, Michael leads under the old covenant, but you shall lead under the new? Is this the same covenant that the Lord was talking to me about? It's just a covenant he makes with Moses. Do you see what I'm saying? He has been telling me over and over and over that I am Moses. And he told me that I will lead the armies under the new covenant. And everybody's like, well, it probably just means the new covenant that Jesus gave us and all that. But I, don't, I always felt it wasn't that. I felt it was a, a specific covenant. And come to find out, the Lord makes a covenant, a future tense covenant with Moses. And I just thought that was awesome. And also, if you turn to Romans 11:26, we read, And so all Israel shall be saved, as, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. The Lord has also been bringing other scriptures to my attention. If you want to turn to, let me turn to my scriptures here. If you want to turn to Obadiah 21. It says, And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Remember God said, the Lord said, um, God hath chosen thee, and I said, to do, for what? And the Lord said, to save the children of Israel. I had people asking me, well, why, well, why did he, they use that word, save? You know, I didn't understand it either. You know why he just didn't use deliver, but why would he use save? Because Jesus is our only savior. But it makes so much sense because when you read stuff like this in Obadiah 21 where it says, And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion. This is speaking of the two witnesses. This is speaking of Moses and Elijah. You know, the two witnesses. And I have another piece of information that I was so excited about. 
that the Lord brought to my attention. You know, there's different versions of the scriptures you can read, and you know, they all say something kind of different. And this one I'm going to read here, and, and I usually read the King James version, but for some reason I was led to the New American Standard Bible, which is NASB, and it so happens to be Acts 7:23. So there's my 23 on the scripture that I'm always seeing, and it says, but when he was approaching the, this is talking of Moses, I just want to tell you guys and remind you guys that this is speaking of Moses. And when he was approaching the age of 40, it entered his mind to visit his brethren, the sons of Israel. So I was, I was thinking about this, brothers and sisters, and I was led to this. And so I'm looking at it, you know, and I'm thinking about that 23 I keep seeing, and I'm seeing that what was the the major time in Moses' life in those in those days where every, you know something changed? And it says here that when he was approaching the age of forty, brothers and sisters, do you guys know how old I am? I am thirty nine years old, approaching the age of forty. I turned forty in December, which is what October. Like took two months away, so about two months I turned forty, and it says here when he was approaching the age of forty. Uh, you know, he it got in putting his mind to visit the sons of Israel. I think the father, you know, he uses these numbers. It's so symbolic. He did it with Moses then. Why wouldn't he do it now? You know, so I think something's definitely about to happen. And I don't think it's a coincidence that I'm turning the age of 40. And if I am Moses, like the Lord keeps telling me in dreams and visions, that it's the same age I am right now when I have that same feeling to get to Israel. You see what I'm saying? I don't think it's a coincidence. You guys know I don't believe in coincidences. And this is not the video where I'm gonna go over all the dreams, visions, and audibles I had of being Moses. If you guys wanna hear all of that, you can kinda go skip back a few videos and watch those videos, cause I do that here and there in those videos. I could have a two hour video of all the you know confirmations and all the dreams and visions of that. And I'm not gonna do that all here. But you guys can go back and watch some of those videos as well. I do have another dream to share with you guys on this particular uh, subject. But before I do that, I was watching this sister's video and she kept playing different pictures, you know, of, of this person or that person, this person. And she got to a picture to where there was a scripture written on the picture about Jacob. For those of you who don't know, God changed my name to Jacob. That is my new name, Jacob. Now... She had, you know, was putting all these random pictures just flashing in from her video. And she gets to where she shows a scripture with the word, with Jacob in a scripture. And come to find out, and I'll have a scripture, if, unless I forget, guys, I'll have a scripture right now in front of you when I'm making this video. And I'll have that picture in front of you now to look at. It is a picture of Moses. So she has the scripture of Jacob, and then she has Moses, a Moses picture, one of the ones I use. You know, so that's kind of like the little bitty confirmations the Lord will give me when I'm thinking about things. I didn't see no other Moses pictures, but the one Moses picture she shows is where, is where she's showing a scripture about Jacob. You see what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I'm like, Lord, are you trying to give me some, you know, more, more confirmation here? But it, that was just for fun. I wanted to show you guys that. Within the last couple days, I had another dream on this subject. That's where I'm going to bring it up now. But it was one to where I was in a dream again, and I had a twin brother. You guys know I've been talking about that lately. I believe I, that Michael is my twin brother. I know that sounds really crazy to some of you, but I'm either with my twin brother in dreams, who is either John the Baptist, which I believe, which I know is Elijah, um, or I'm with Michael. And I was told over and over and over because I asked about who my two by two warrior companion was. And I kept getting the name Michael in visions. And so I know that Michael's my, my, my warrior companion. And when I was talking about that, um, I was in this dream and I was with my companion, my warrior companion. And here we are, I knew, I knew that we were highly trained and we're, there was this girl there and she had to choose between me and my twin and it, it goes deeper a lot a lot deeper than what I'm telling you guys here now but you guys aren't gonna understand what I'm saying I mean it gets really I mean it'll get some of these dreams sometimes brothers and sisters would get so out there that you know if you tell it people are gonna they have their, their mind blown and I don't I'm not sure I'm ready to blow anybody's mind but in this dream she had to choose between me and my twin 
And I'll just say this. I believe that it's a possibility that some of us were spirits before we came to the earth. You guys already know I, I, I've been shown that. And you guys already knew that before I ever came to this earth that I told you I was, I was told many, many times, over 60 times uh, all around there that I was Raphael. And so I believe that some of us, uh, I think the Lord is trying to show me right now that I had a twin, but that my twin like went bad or something like, I'm not even going to say who I think that person was, but I think I had a twin. He f and I think this twin fell and I didn't I chose the Lord of course and I think that as a reward that I've and so because I'm not going to be with my twin that I had that the Lord has blessed me with to be twins with Michael I know that sounds way out there for those of you who are playing church and coming out of church and, and hearing that but when the Lord shows you something so much, and that's why I didn't want to even mention that part, because most of you guys will hear that, and you're not going to understand what I'm saying. It's just going to make me sound Looney Tunes or something, you know? But let's just say that some of us lived before we came to this earth. We were actual spirits, and I believe that we all had to make a choice to whether we were going to serve God or not. And some of our spirits were twins. I mean, some of us, every once in a while, we had a twin. And I believe I had a twin, and I believe that's why I saw... A few weeks ago, I saw me and my, I believe, who was my older twin. And we both had, at this particular time, we both had white hair in this, in this vision. And I think, I could be wrong, this is just my opinion from my dreams, but I believe that it was me and my other twin who fell. And I believe that he fell, I didn't, I chose God with, you know, I love the Father and the Son with all my heart. And so, I don't know, I kind of think sometimes, because now I know through all my dreams and visions that... I have another twin and I believe it's Michael. I believe because the Lord showed me and told me pretty much that I was the older twin out of two twins. And I believe it was Michael was the younger. And so I don't know if Michael was always my twin or, but I don't feel like that. I, I feel like it was in the new, if you know what I mean. God's creating everything new. And I believe that in the new that the Lord I have, his first two sons would be twins. And I'm not gonna even go any deeper into that. I don't want to confuse anybody, but getting back to this dream, I was with a twin, and I'm not sure which one. I think it might have even been the bad one. Uh, before the fall, I'm going to state that, before the fall. And we're there, and there was a woman there, and she had to choose between me and this other twin. Now, I've seen this plenty of times. I have a friend who's seen this in, in her own dreams plenty of times, that... Yeah, she had to choose between these two people. And they're there, and for some reason, when the Lord wants me to get extra confirmation to what he's trying to tell me, because I know how far out this can sound, and so the Lord will give me extra confirmations and extra witnesses to it, just so I can believe it, you know what I mean? And remember what the Lord said. He told his people when, when he was on the earth, you believe me not when I told you earthly things, how are you to believe me when I tell you heavenly things? So I'm not one of those people who is just a doubting Thomas. If the Lord tells me something in a vision or a dream or audibly and confirms it and it fits scripture, then I'll believe it. And so I'm there and for some reason they're asking me who I was again and I think just so I can get an extra confirmation and I'm not sure I can even control what I say. And I said, yeah, you know, before I came to the earth, I was the Archangel Raphael and I said, uh, and I started talking to them and telling them that on the earth that I was Moses. Now I want you guys to remember, I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but I believe that the Lord has showed me many times over, just as he said out of Jesus' own mouth, he said that John the Baptist is Elijah. And so I believe that just as John the Baptist was Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, that the spirit of the apostle John was the spirit of Moses. When you start having visions and dreams over and over about being a particular person how many times would you need to hear it brothers and sisters think about that in your mind how many times would you have to be told something like that before you would believe the lord you know so before you would go and scoff at me think to yourself well let me think about this if the lord told me that i was one of the witnesses and he told me i was moses and i've heard it this many times how many times would he have to tell me before i'd believe him you know, so think about that when you're listening to this message. 
Just so you know, I don't say this stuff out of pride. I know that I'm nothing. I truly do. I'm nothing but a worm. You know, I'm not saying this to be somebody. I'm nothing. But the cool thing about it all is that the Lord uses nobodies every day to confound the wise. You know, He uses the babes. You know, He's our God. He's the God that defeated the wolves with a lamb. You know what I mean? God is amazing and I love Him with all my heart. If I have hurt any of you, I, I'd ask for your forgiveness. My only desire for this channel is to bring souls to Christ and to encourage you guys. And sometimes I do talk about, I do feel like I talk about my own personal revelation too much, but I really don't have many people to talk to and so I get really excited about it and I want to share it with you guys. And I do ask for your prayers because I am hit hard because of that. No longer am I in hiding, you know, they know who I am. And so they come out and they attack me so hard. And so I would ask you all to keep me in your prayers that the Lord would send extra help my way to defend. Uh, they must have a whole army here, but I'm not worried, brothers and sisters, because I have complete faith and confidence in my God. Our God is sovereign. Also, keep in mind, brothers and sisters, to pray for me that my financial needs are, are met. It's always day by day, week by week, month by month here. I usually just get by by the skin of my teeth, you know, and, and just keep praying for me. Um, I'd like to go over uh, some more scriptures with you guys. Please turn to John 5, 43 to 47. It reads, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another comes, shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Talking about the Antichrist. 44 says, How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Hallelujah. 45. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father, for there is one that will accuse you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For ye believed, for if ye had believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? So this is Jesus talking to the people and the Pharisees of his day. And if I remember correctly, Brother Stephen, when he was speaking of this, because he knows the Hebrew, he was saying that this also is a future event, that Moses, being one of the two witnesses, will accuse the people, um, you know, because here they are they believe they're the children of Moses and Abraham and all of this but it's going to be Moses one of the two witnesses Moses and Elijah who go to them and let them know that Jesus is the king of kings Jesus is the Messiah the one that you all denied and hung on a cross and so they'll have Moses and Elijah there telling everybody that we're not worthy to kiss his feet we're not worthy to tie his shoestrings or you know latch his sandals that's how awesome the man is that you did not accept. Can't, I can just see their faces, you know. Uh, you got Moses, you got Elijah there, just saying that they're not even worthy to kiss that man's feet. And he's the one you denied and hung from a tree, you know, hung on a cross. I can't wait for that day, brothers and sisters, to, to when the children of Israel finally accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I'm not going to make this video too long to be going over so many scriptures. So what I'm going to do is just let you guys know that in the New Testament, in multiple places, you know, it talks about the two olive trees that stand to the right and the left of the Lord. And we see that same exact thing at the Mount of Transfiguration where Moses and Elijah appear at the side of Jesus, just as the two olive trees do in Revelation and then I believe in Zechariah if I remember correctly. So we have the scriptures that plainly shows us who it is that stands to the right and the left of the Lord because the Bible says that the two witnesses are the two olive trees that stand to the right and the left of the Lord. And so here we have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being transfigured at the Mount of Transfiguration we have Moses and Elijah appearing to his left and to his right showing us clear cut these are the two olive trees. These are the two witnesses. I want to take you to another scripture that I think you guys will enjoy, and it's also future tense. If you would turn to Micah chapter 7, we're going to go through verses 14 to 20. And it says, 
Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine inheritance, which dwell solitarily in the woods, in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead, as in the days of old. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. Now, this is future tense, a lot of things in Hebrew, because I've been doing a little study on this, and a lot of this stuff in Hebrew is future tense that they might have as present tense in our English translation. So it's clearly talking about Moses here. It talks about the rod, staff of Moses. It's, it's kind of, you know, leading to that. Then it goes, according to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. From my study on this, brothers and sisters, these this is talking about something that hasn't even happened yet. They used the word marvelous, but I, I think that what I, they were trying to teach us is that the word in Hebrew is wonders, but that they thought that no way that the Lord could do anything greater than what he did with Moses besides parting the sea. But, you know, they don't, they don't have the New Testament or they don't read the New Testament like they should because the Lord is going to do something even greater with Moses than he did at the first. He's going to do wonders, not just marvels, but wonders. And the Hebrew scholars, when they translated this for us into English, they actually changed it. I think this is the one where they changed it into, um, instead of putting wonders like it should have been, I, I think they put marvels there, if I remember correctly. So the nation shall see and be confounded at Here's, here he goes again. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things, wondrous things. The nation shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hands upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. You guys know how if you're so shocked at something, you, like you'll see people put their hand over their mouth, like, <gasps> you know, like they cover their mouth, like, oh my goodness. Well, who is the they here? The they here is or are the two witnesses. So it's talking about Moses. It, it clearly is talking about Moses here. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, that's Moses. Will I show unto him marvelous, wondrous things? The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. The two witnesses. They shall lay their hands upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms on the earth. They shall, okay, who, what are the, uh, the worms of the earth? This is talking about the rich and the famous and the Illuminati and all them guys, how they're making all these, you know, these tunnels under the earth and, and how they're trying to hide, you know, hide away while all the tribulations going on, but they're not going to be able to. The Lord is saying here, he's going to make them come out of their holes like worms. So I find that kind of funny. It's pretty cool. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. Now, the way it was translated, uh, it's talking about they shall fear because of seeing thee. So it, it's clearly saying that like, everybody's freaking out because they're seeing Moses and Elijah and God's using them to do all these wondrous things. You know, they're going to be like, oh my goodness, they're going to be in shock, brothers and sisters. They're going to be covering their mouth with their hand like, oh my goodness. And who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. I had to share that with you guys because it's yet again an unfulfilled prophecy that hasn't happened yet, you know? And like I read you guys earlier in Exodus, the Lord says, I'm, he's going to show Moses some wondrous things. And, you know, he's talking about a future tense, something that he hasn't done yet. And, you know, so the Bible clearly shows us that Moses has to come again. And we know that with Elijah... Uh, John the Baptist was already dead when Jesus said that surely Elijah shall come again. So John the Baptist is dead. Jesus tells his uh, disciples that surely John the Baptist, I mean that Elijah would come again after he was already dead. So Jesus showed us at the Mount of Transfiguration who the two olive trees were, the two witnesses. And the Bible is clear about who they are, it is Moses and Elijah. I had a whole nother subject planned for the rest of this video, but the video is already way too long. So I'm gonna just read two more scriptures for you guys. 
And I'll start off by reading in Matthew 24, 23 to 27, and it reads, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth, behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. I couldn't tell you how many false doctrines are going around right now online. Some believe that Jesus is incarnated again on the earth and walking the streets. You know, some believe that Jesus has a twin brother and that they're the two witnesses. And there are some really, really bad false doctrines out there. And some of these people that are giving them are people that I care about, that I love. I'm not going to say any names because I truly love these people. I mean, they have stopped talking to me because I have come out and tried to privately go to them to let them know that, you know, that they're being deceived, you know, and it just, oh my, I just, I, every time that the Lord sends me to do that, I, it makes me lose friendships, but I don't care because the only friendship that I truly need is with my Savior, and I love him, brothers. I love you guys too, but I really love my Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit with all my heart. I give my life to him every single day. If you guys hear anybody saying that Jesus is on the earth right now, he's walking the earth, he's incarnated somewhere, um, you know, believe it not. The Bible clearly tells us believe it not. Well, some will use the excuse, well, well, the Bible does say that Jesus was touched down on the, um, on the, Mount, um, the Mount of Olives. Yes, but that's like second coming type stuff. That's when he comes back. You know, but before he comes back, he will rapture his people. And he comes as a thief in the night when he raptures his people. He's not setting down on the rapture. He's up in the clouds. He takes us out. Yes, he comes back with his saints on white horses at the very end. And he touches down. But brothers and sisters, he's not, um, he's not going to be touching down right now. He's not here right now. So don't believe anybody who tells you that Jesus is on the earth right now because he's not. I don't want any of you being, you know, fooled with this one thing that Jesus, when he comes back, you're going to know it's Jesus because he's going to be in the clouds riding on a white horse, followed by a bunch of saints riding on white horses. It's not going to be hard to miss the Lord. You know, he's not down the street working at a 7-Eleven just finding out he's Jesus. It doesn't work like that. Jesus will not come back and not know who he is. And Jesus, some are actually saying that he, they think that, that Jesus has to die again that he's one of the two witnesses and that he has to die again. Brothers and sisters, the scripture that says that it's only appointed one, once for man to die, then come the judgment. If you read that whole script, that whole chapter in context, it's talking about Jesus only having to die once for the people. Our savior will only die one time, which he's already done. He's been victorious. He received his new body after three days. He got a glorified body and became one with God. He's not coming down to get rid of that body again. He's not coming down to die again. He was already victorious, brothers and sisters, and he rose on the third day. What did Jesus say to the Father? What did he say when he was done on that cross? He said, it is finished. He didn't say, well, it's kind of finished, uh, but I got to come back in 2,000 years and do this all over again. No, brothers and sisters, his spirit is in us. You know, we are his temple. When Jesus said, it is finished, he meant it's finished. His work was done. Salvation is available to all who repent and surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. And I invite all of you to surrender your lives to Jesus Christ. I'd like to share one last scripture with you guys in Luke. Let me go to that. Luke 21, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So here's the Lord saying to pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that, that shall come to pass. What's coming to pass is the tribulation. So if you want to be accounted worthy, saying pray always 
you know, and pray that you're going to be accounted worthy. Please, Lord, accept me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive my sins. And, you know, help, please, Lord, find me worthy. And do all that you can do, brothers and sisters, to be counted worthy at that day. That's pretty much what he's saying. He didn't say here um, that you're automatically counted worthy. No, he's saying pray. And he's saying to do a work, the big bad, bad word, work. You know, he's telling you to do something, you know, but works, good works, good deeds are the evidence of our faith. So I invite all of you to pray, to repent, to get baptized by full submersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to choose this day whom ye will serve. As for me in my house, I will serve the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. Stumbled and fell And you want to run away You find yourself holding On the yesterday The light is fading fast Love to say the weight of your past holds you down again. I'm sorry for every time that I hurt you. I was living like a dog, and you called me to live in virtue. You searched my heart, but I never searched for you. I was too busy finding my satisfaction in the slop of the society. And when the consequences came, I had the audacity to look at you and say, why me? I don't get it. You named the sin and I did it. I feel the shame because I'm in it. And sometimes the weight of my past makes it hard for me to breathe. And they say it gets better, but the future is too far for me to see. I can't look out the windshield when I have a million people holding up rear views. I'm a wretched man and I don't belong anywhere near you. But your hand is still out and you say, come as I am. But why do you keep telling me to come when you know that I can't? I never heard you speak until I held that gun in my hand. And when I pressed it to my chest, you told me to stop. I'm standing here with nothing in my hands because nothing is all that I got. I don't know why you want me when I don't want myself. And those pills I popped, did nothing will stop my health. The doctor said I feel better with Xanax and Lexapro. I popped pills by the bottle but still couldn't let you go. Because every time I ran from reality, the reality of who you are ran to me. You said you had plans for me. Is this who you planned I'd be? So many lies told about me like plan B. Or did you have more for me? Numb to the pain like morphine. But the highs always stopped, but the headaches wouldn't. And I must have lied to a thousand people in the meeting greet lines I stood in. Fake smiles and forced prayers for their family and health. Trying to give them the hope I never felt for myself. Get back home and stick that Bible back on that shelf. I spent more time talking about you than I talked with you. I felt like Judas when he betrayed you and kissed you. Clayton Michael Iscariot, a flawed sinner who took his sin and tried to bury it. Only to find out my sin was too heavy and I couldn't carry it. So this is me. Take it, but I suggest you leave it. My dad used to warn me, but I'd never heed it. Suit and tie on the outside, but I have the heart of a felon. Sin looked good, but life got hard when I fell in. And I couldn't get out. I sank into the sunken place and lived without, without church and without the Bible. Slumped over sulking hours away from my next revival. Like a rock star with no rock and no star of David. The spotlight was my instrument and I learned to play it. And the music sounded good to the masses who amassed in amazement. They never saw the depressed Clayton strung out in the basement. If I could go back, I'd do anything I could to change it. Memories of when I was authentic or ancient. I was never in this for recognition or payment. But that changed somewhere along those million miles of pavement and I've passed a lot of roadkill along the way and maybe I'll get killed on the road someday people write death threats and think that it bothers me but let me show you the honest me honestly I get why people hate me but I have no clue why some are so fond of me I'd be just fine leaving the world today or tomorrow the end of life has two doors like a Monte Carlo I hope I'm on a highway to heaven and someday I get let in I hope someday I stop trying to carry the weight of my past and I let him because all you ever wanted from me was me you tried showing me roadblocks I was too stubborn to see. You took my shame and you took my loss. And you said I forgive you when you hung on that cross. I'm sorry for every time that I left you. The scandal is my sin. The ending is your rescue. Just let it go. You've 
come in the final days. Knowing God has held you in reserve for nearly six thousand years. to meet your God. Oh, youth of the noble birth. You're part of the Lord's royal army. An army. There are things for each of you to do that no one else can do. You will preserve as well as your special world. You. 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 Me?